Good evening, Steve Cotter here to share some ideas and thoughts. Take it for what it's worth to you. Today, I want to talk about the power of not knowing. That's the power of not knowing. And the modern world we live in, things move so quickly and there's so many of us running around with uncertainty and fear about what essentially is the unknown. Fear about the future, fear about death, fear about meeting people, fear about speaking. It's fear. I believe all fears have a fundamental cause or all fears essentially are the same fear, like rivers leading into the ocean. All roads lead to Rome. And really, it's the fear of the unknown. Some people express that unknown as death. Others express that unknown as uh, being attacked or crashing in a plane or speaking in front of a group, job interview, a date, what have you. It's the fear of the unknown. And what I want to impress upon you is that not knowing is perfectly okay. In, in fact, there's power in not knowing. I would go so far as to say that the fear of not knowing is really the opposite of faith. Faith is some belief or a certainty about that which we cannot experience through our sensory organs. We can't see it, we can't touch it, we can't feel it, we can't smell it, we can't taste it, and yet we still believe that it's true. We believe that it exists even though there's no what we would call evidence to verify that it exists. And so when we have this fear of not knowing and we have this constant preoccupation with having to find things out, and that's, that's the kind of world that we're in right now. We, we have to know. And if I don't know, how do I find it? I got to Google it. I need, I need to watch the news. I need to get this information because I cannot stand not knowing. This is an impatience. And this is really a lack of faith. And we can trace this back to the story of man or his story. His story the story of man. A lot of these stories are, are taught, at least in part, in most of the religions of the world, maybe even all of the religions. And actually, those stories of man, as I like to call them, are essentially the same stories told throughout the different cultures and the different traditions. And names might be tinkered with a little bit and some details might be tinkered with, but the fundamental story or the moral of the story has been around as long as mankind has been roaming this earth. As long as there's been tribes sitting around fire and telling stories, we have this fundamental interest in understanding where we came from and where we're going. And so if we look at the story of man, Western society were more familiar with the Judeo-Christian uh, versions of these stories of man. So we talk about the Garden of Eden and man's fall from grace. And again, the symbolism, the eating of the apple, eating from the tree of knowledge. Uh, so, and what happened? And, and eating that taking the bite of the apple, and then obviously now we have the ability to, to know things. Before that, we didn't have to know because we had faith, because we knew that God, if you will, or the creator or the creation, I don't even like to use names on these things because the names limit. What does it mean to you if I say God? Some picture comes into mind, so you're defining the undefinable. So whatever you want to call that essential power. Faith is we just know everything is going to be exactly the way it needs to be. Everything's going to work out in its highest, to its highest nature. Uh, that's evolution. It's going to evolve. It's going to grow. Without that faith, 
we're uncertain, we have to know. So again, there's power in not knowing. It's okay not to know. And that's mysterious. And that's really what I'm saying is that in the modern world, we've lost the mystery. We've gotten rid of the mystery. We're putting our whole life out there on the book of face and all these things. And everybody needs to know everything. We're consumed by media, whether it's social media, mainstream media, alternative media. And need to know, need to know, need the information. Where's the mystery? What happens in a relationship when there's no mystery? It gets boring. Okay, there has to be something unknown. There has to be something curious. There has to be something that shows that there's more to be learned. And the take home message to this is that be comfortable not knowing. Be comfortable not knowing where your next meal is going to come from. Be comfortable not knowing who you're going to meet, who you're going to talk to. Be comfortable with that. And you can be comfortable with that when you have essential faith. And if you don't believe in something other, if you don't believe in some higher power, that's okay. Believe in yourself. There's really no differentiation. In, out, up, down. Everything's interrelated in life. That includes that which we know and that which we do not know. So how boring is life going to be if you know everything there is to know about everything, there's really no reason to waste your time here. Rather, there's mystery when there's things that we don't know. So be comfortable in not knowing. And in that, a whole world of mystery opens up to you. And that's what's so cool about life is as we're going, walking along that path, there comes forks in the road. There comes detours and how we handle those detours what comes out of that that determines what we might call success or not success and so not knowing is powerful not knowing is faithful and not knowing is mysterious so put some mystery into your life Stop trying to figure everything out, driving yourself crazy. Realize we're limited in what we can understand. It's not to say we should not seek knowledge, we should not try to learn, but learn and grow and understand that even if you've learned everything, there's still a bunch more to learn. The power of not knowing.